Tensors, do it for the data. Tensors, do it for the speed. Tensors, do it whenever you feel the need. StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to talk about tensors for neural networks and they're going to be clearly explained. This StatQuest is sponsored by Lightning and Grid.ai. With Lightning, you can design, build, and scale models with ease. Focus on the business and research problems that matter to you. Lightning takes care of everything else. And with Grid, you can use the cloud to seamlessly train hundreds of models from your laptop with a single command. No code changes necessary. For more details, follow the links in the pinned comment below. Note. One thing that makes tensors a little confusing is that different people use the word tensor differently. People in the math and physics community define tensor one way, and people in the machine learning community define tensor a different way. In this stat quest, we're going to focus on the way tensor is used in the machine learning community. Within the machine learning community, tensors are used in conjunction with neural networks. So we need to talk about neural networks. Note, if you're not already familiar with neural networks, feel free to check out the quests. The links are in the description below. Anyway, neural networks can do a lot of things. For example, in the stat quest, Neural Networks Part 1, Inside the Black Box, we had a simple neural network that had a single input, drug dosage, and use that single value to predict a single output, the efficacy of the dosage. Then, in the stack quest on backpropagation, we saw that even with this super simple neural network and this super simple training data with only three data points, we still had to do a lot of math for the neural network to fit this squiggle to the data. Ugh, math. Then, in the stat quest, Neural Networks Part 4, Multiple Inputs and Outputs, we had a fancier neural network that had two inputs that corresponded to two different flower measurements and had three outputs that predicted which Irish species these two measurements came from. And then we saw how the neural network does a lot of math to make those predictions. Double ug, more math. Then, in the StatQuest Neural Networks Part 8, Image Classification with Convolutional Neural Networks, we had a super fancy neural network that had a 6 pixel by 6 pixel image, so 36 pixels in all, as the input, and two outputs that predicted whether the image was of an X or an O. And we walked through a whole lot of math that we needed to do in order to make those predictions. Triple UG! So much math! Note, even though this neural network needs to do a whole lot of math, it's still relatively simple compared to the types of neural networks that are used in practice. For example, the input to this convolutional neural network is a relatively small 6 pixels by 6 pixels black and white image. However, in practice, usually the input image is much larger, like 256 by 256, and that means the input has 65,536 pixels. And usually the image is color instead of black and white. And color images are usually split into three color channels, red, green, and blue. And, since the neural network treats each channel separately, that basically triples the number of pixels we have to do math on. So now we're up to 3 times 65,536, which equals 196,608 pixels that we have to do a lot of math on. And this is just one image, and usually we need to do a ton of images to train the neural network. So that means we have to do a ton of math on a ton of images. And if we want to apply a neural network to video, which is basically a series of images, then we have even more math. Ugh. The good news is, is that all this math is what tensors were designed for. Bam. Now let's talk about what tensors are. From the perspective of someone who is creating a neural network, 
Tensors are ways to store the input data, which in this example consists of three color channels for every single frame. But, as we saw earlier, the input can also be super simple and consist of a single value. And tensors also store the weights and biases that make up the neural network. So, from the perspective of someone creating a neural network, tensors can seem really boring. Wah, wah. For example, the input value for this neural network is just a single value, which, in most programming languages, we'd call a scalar. However, to make things seem more exciting, we can use fancy terminology and call the input, which is just a single value, a zero-dimensional tensor. When a neural network takes two input values like this one, then, in most programming languages, we would say we store the inputs in an array. However, using tensor talk, we will call this a one-dimensional tensor. Likewise, when the input is a single image, most programming languages would call it a matrix, but we'll call it a two-dimensional tensor. And when the input is video, most programming languages would call this a multi-dimensional matrix or a multi-dimensional array, or, for you Python people, an ND array. However, using tensor talk, we will call it an n-dimensional tensor. So, just like I said earlier, from the perspective of someone creating a neural network, tensors can seem really boring, because all we have done is rename things that already exist. So what's the big deal? Well, unlike normal scalars, arrays, matrices, and n-dimensional matrices, tensors were designed to take advantage of hardware acceleration. In other words, tensors don't just hold data in various shapes like these, but they also allow for all the math that we have to do with the data to be done relatively quickly. Usually, Tensors and the math they do are sped up with special chips called graphics processing units, GPUs. But there are also tensor processing units, TPUs, that are specifically designed to work with tensors and make neural networks run relatively quickly. Double BAM! Note, one thing I hinted at early on but didn't dive into the details about is that one of the things we do with neural networks is estimate the optimal weights and biases with backpropagation. And if you saw the stat quest on backpropagation, you'll know that we have to derive a bunch of derivatives and do a whole lot of the, the chain, chain rule. Well, one more cool thing about tensors is that they take care of backpropagation for you with automatic differentiation. This means you can pretty much create the fanciest neural network ever, and the hard part, figuring out the derivatives, will be taken care of by the tensors. Triple BAM! In summary, there are two types of tensors. One type is used by mathematicians and physicists. We did not talk about these today. The other type of tensor is used in neural networks. This is the type we talked about. Tensors for neural networks hold the data and the weights and biases, and are designed for hardware acceleration so that neural networks can do all the math they need to do in a relatively short period of time. And they take care of backpropagation with automatic differentiation. Bam. Now it's time for some shameless self-promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, Check out the StatQuest study guides at statquest.org. There's something for everyone. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting StatQuest. If you like this StatQuest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StatQuest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs, or a t-shirt, or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. Alright, until next time, Quest on!